Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back on this channel. We have been trying to find out who are these people. I found a bag of antique photos in an antique mall and they had names and dates on the back and so I have been trying to search for these people. As a genealogist, this just seems to be really fun for me. I happened to post it to um, slash old photos and slash genealogy on Reddit. Lots of people excited to help. So thank you so much. I will be mentioning um, those people and their contributions in this video. I haven't really seen other people do this type of content online and I just love genealogy and I love old photos and solving mysteries. So if that's something that you are also into, I would love it if you subscribed. Um, it really helps out the channel. Right now, I only have about 18 subscribers, so my goal right now is 100 subscribers, which would be amazing. And if you have been here before and you've enjoyed the videos, go ahead and hit the notification bell so that you can find out what happens in the next installment of Finding the Adel Georges. <laughs> check out episode one and two. I'll leave it, the link in the cards above and in the description below. I want to say special thanks to Spacey Catnip who totally went out of their way. They went ahead and searched for last name plus uh, Nebraska as a resident and came across this person born in 1897 on family search, Lydia Adel George. That looks like her. I recognize Sarpy as the county. It looks like she lived to adulthood. She married John Norton. Oh, lived with her parents, Henry and Bertha. Oh my gosh, that's our Henry and Bertha. Look at them right here. Oh my gosh, look at them. They have a couple more kids than we had listed. What you can do to find out to see who's related to these people, you can go and see who has been editing their tree. Not related, not related. A lot of these people might just be volunteers, but that's all right. Let's see what else that we found. Here's an obituary that is a gold mine obituary and says he married his wife on March 5th, 1896. And I have their wedding photo, so this is like super cool. Here's the obituary. Henry Solomon Adel George was born in Aurora, Kane County, Illinois, March 21st, 1869, where he started school at age six. At age seven, he came with his family to Storm Lake, Iowa, and started a family in the pioneer style by breaking the sod and building a home. Then the family moved back to Aurora where the deceased received 36 months of schooling. 36 months would be three years, third grade. From Aurora, the family moved to Ohio River in Southern Indiana in 1885. He married Bertha Frick of Papillon. Papillon? I know Papillon is butterfly in French. I'm not sure how you say it in English. Thank you goes out to a YouTube commenter who says it is pronounced papillion rhymes with a million. Papillion. Papillion. The correct way to pronounce frick is actually fricky. Huh. Who would have guessed? I would have never guessed. Thanks. That's really fun to learn how to correctly pronounce um, places. I don't know if anybody else thinks that's fun but me. <laughs> Nine children were born, three of whom survived. They are Lydia Norton, Louise Adel George, oh, Louise survived of Omaha, and Sophie Schmidt of Papillon. Okay, so Sophie's Sophie survived. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. So we need to find Sophie's children, grandchildren. Okay, so it says grandchildren are Ava May Elaine and Ethel Norton of Omaha, Marilyn and Robert Schmidt of Papillon, and two brothers. Oh my gosh, Reverend Samuel Adel George. Oh my God, he totally looks like a reverend too. He's in Higginsville, Missouri, and Reverend. Benjamin Adel George of Cannon City, Colorado. Oh my God, this is so cool. So this is a gold mine uh, obituary. I see why she said that. Wow. So Sophie Schmidt, that's the line we're looking for. And so Sophie's grandkids are Marilyn and Robert Schmidt. So we're gonna have to put that into the tree and trace their lines down. So this is totally exciting. Let's see what else the obituary says. Names a bunch of more descendants. 
Okay, so he was super religious. He was 76 and one month and 10 days old when he died. Here we have a second article in the Papillon Times. Papillion. Papillion. Nebraska. Death visits home twice. Elsie, the 12-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Adel George, died Monday evening at 9 o'clock after an illness of only three days of scarlet fever. She had been attending school until last Friday when she went home and was taken sick. A physician was summoned at once and did all in his power to allay the ravages of the disease, but his efforts and the efforts of the trained nurses and kind loving ministrations of parents availed nothing and she was taken to her heavenly home Monday evening. Elsie Adel George, this is really sad. Oh, wow. Elsie Adel George was born July 3rd, 1901 on a farm a few miles northwest of town and later moved and moved with her parents to the farm now occupied by the family just southeast of town. She was a member of the eighth grade of Papillon School and was considered one of the bright and promising members of this class and was also dearly loved by her classmates and by all who knew her. She will be sadly missed from their midst. It seems almost impossible for her schoolmates to realize that within three short days she should have passed from bright and joyous life and good health to the realms of the greater unknown. She was also a member of Sunday school at the German church. She is survived by her heartbroken parents and four sisters, Lydia, Clara, Lois, and Sophia, the baby. The three former sisters are also very sick with the same disease. She will be greatly missed. The three former sisters are also very sick with the same disease from everything else we read that Lydia, Clara, and Louise are dead. So if we go back to the obituary, we know that the surviving daughters are Lydia, Lois, and Sophia. I'm a survivor. Clara seems to have died along with Elsie. Elsie will be greatly missed from the family circle. Death visited the home only a few years ago when another daughter was claimed by the Grim Reaper and it seems that the wounds then inflicted had hardly healed only to be opened anew. See, in retrospect, you are keeping a body with scarlet fever in your home for two days and it's going to infect the rest of the family. People didn't know these things back then though. Since writing the above obituary, Clara, the seven-year-old sister, succumbed to an attack of scarlet fever dying at one o'clock this morning. Wow. After being ill for about a week. Holy crap. So she literally died as they were writing the obituary for her sister. This is terrifying. It's kind of like the COVID of 1914. Um, so very sad. So um, Clara died probably January 15th or January 14th because this was published on the 15th. And Clara was the first one of the family to be taken ill, but for a time it was thought she would recover. She was taken suddenly worse yesterday and all hope was given up. She was born December 18th, 1906 on a farm near Portal and moved near Papillon with her parents five years ago. She was a member of the first grade of the Papillon School. Imagine how many other first graders must have perished. Wow. Well, you guys, I think we know now how maybe the photos got lost because a lot of the families seem to have died. And here I'm seeing more Adel George names. So what is this? Scarlet fever causes, what does that say? Scarlet fever causes scare. At a special meeting of the Board of Education held Wednesday morning, it was decided to close the Papillon School, the balance of the week pending further development of the spread of scarlet fever. Three families residing near Papillon are afflicted with the disease. They are Henry Adel George, Ernest Peterson, and Jacob Fluke Jr. families. Two children in the Adel George family have died and one in the Peterson family. Two other children in each of the two latter named families are quite sick but are also improving at the present. One other case has been reported and there are many petty ailments among the children and the board decided while the situation was not especially serious, yet a reasonable precaution should be taken to prevent any spread of the disease. School was dismissed Wednesday afternoon. 
Wow, the Peterson children were taken ill during Christmas vacation. The Ada George children in attendance until one week ago Wednesday when one of them was taken ill. As soon as the case was diagnosed with scarlet fever by the attending physicians, which was last Friday, every room in the school building was thoroughly fumigated and the books which were used by the children afflicted while in school were burned. Oh my God. The rooms will again be thoroughly fumigated while school is closed and every precaution taken to check the spread of the disease. No fear of an epidemic is end entertained by physicians here. The Sarpy, Sharpy, Sapi, Sarpy <laughs> County Farmers Institute was also postponed until further notice. Oh my gosh. Let's see what else it says about the kids. Um, Clara, the seven-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Edeljord died just this morning of this dreaded disease while Elsie, their 12-year-old daughter, died Monday night. Fritz, the four-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Ernest Peterson, died of this disease Wednesday morning. Four other children of this family are also down with the fever but improving. Wow. Wow, you guys. Well, this is why the family um, maybe didn't want these pictures because they're pictures of children that died um, a very long time ago in a very sad way still kind of sad. I would still like to return the pictures to Sophie's grandkids. I still think that the pictures deserve a place to live. So if you would also like to help solve this mystery and get mentioned in a video in the future, please just leave a comment below with anything you find on the case and we will solve this together and return these pictures to the family. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all of you guys. It's super fun to be able to solve mysteries together on the internet. So be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that fun stuff. It super helps out the channel. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Bye. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor.